Muso here. Let's continue our topic of motion graphs. This video is going to be all about acceleration time graphs, but to be honest with you, they're basic and boring. So I'm just going to explain acceleration time graphs while also comparing some scenarios of displacement time graph and velocity time graph. So what I've got here is three different graphs kind of on top of each other vertically. You see this a lot in physics problems uh, where up here I'm going to be modeling the displacement of the object. Here I'm going to be modeling the velocity, and then down here, the acceleration acting on it. I'm gonna give a couple different examples so you can try to make sense of all of this. And remember, the key things to look at in each graph would be the slope and the area of each whenever we possibly can, okay? Um, so let's start off with the basic of basic. Uh, well, maybe not the most basic one. Let's get a little bit, um, let's mix it up a little bit. And I'm gonna give you this situation. And I'm not gonna, I'm, again, I'm not gonna put specific quantity in here. I'm just gonna kind of say like medium versus large. And uh, we're gonna go with it. So what I wanna show here, and then I'm gonna see what the V graph looks like and the AT graph looks like. So here we've got ourselves the displacement time graph. You can see here that an object started at some positive displacement, approached the zero spot, finished at some negative displacement. So you may recall that means the object is going backward. Uh, let's take a look at the slope. The slope represents velocity, right? It's a displacement time graph. I have the time way down here instead of me writing it three different times. And here, uh, displacement time graph represents slope. That slope is constant and is negative. So I have a constant velocity that's negative. It doesn't look all that high either. The slope is pretty shallow. Remember, horizontal is zero. Vertical is infinitely high. So we've got ourselves a pretty shallow speed and it's a negative speed and it's constant. So if I were to then go ahead and model the velocity time graph, I need to have a graph that shows constant velocity. Well, remember for a velocity time graph, the slope represents the acceleration. And if we're in dealing with constant velocity, that means there is no acceleration. So I should have once again, not only a constant slope, but now in this case, that constant slope should be zero. That doesn't mean I'm zero on the x-axis. That means I should have a slope of zero value. Remember, horizontal is zero slope. So as long as I have a horizontal line, I'm representing constant velocity when I'm dealing with a velocity time graph. We know that that velocity is negative, and like I said, moderate. So what I'm gonna do, just you know, randomly, without tossing numbers in here, I'm gonna draw a horizontal line in the negative region of the velocity time graph. That means this object is experiencing during that entire segment. So if I were to dash down here, I can see that this represents the same moment in time for all three graphs, right? If I were to dash down at that spot, that's where it ends, constant negative velocity. Constant negative velocity. Cool. Now let's talk about the acceleration time graph. And this is why I said acceleration time graphs are kind of boring because in entry level physics, high school or AP style physics, we typically deal with scenarios in which we have a non uh, or a constant acceleration. Remember, uniform accelerated motion. So we have an acceleration that's always going to be the same. So almost every single time we do an acceleration time graph, unless it's a conceptual type of scenario, we're going to be dealing with horizontal lines. If we have a horizontal line at the origin, that means the acceleration is zero. If I have a horizontal line above the origin, that means the acceleration is positive, and if I have it below, it's negative. So we see here from looking at the velocity time graph, or even looking at the displacement time graph, that we have no acceleration at all, it's constant. So I need to draw a line that represents zero acceleration the entire time. Yeah, you probably see it pretty boring. I'm just gonna be drawing a blue line on the origin, which is gonna mean I'm gonna have to redraw my X axes once I erase all of this, because once it's gonna have to happen, once I erase it, it's gone, right? So there we go. Look at how incredible this is, right? I mean, I know you look at it and you might think, oh, this is boring, or I don't know why I have to do this. Once you start doing labs and stuff, this is gonna be a little bit more clear, I think. Uh, modeling the motion vis-a-vis -a, -vis a graph is incredibly important. We do it all the time in the real world. It's not just in class. Again, look at it. Constant negative velocity, constant negative velocity, no acceleration, okay? Let's go ahead and give a slightly more I don't know if it's complex per se, but uh, we'll kick it up a notch, okay? Give me a second to erase all of this stuff. 
And I think I'm going to use the marker end. So I use a Sharpie marker on the marker board so I don't constantly erase it, right? Which is cool. I was all like, sweet. I don't have to redo my lines over and over again. But something I forgot, the non-Sharpie markers, these dry erase markers, they have a little alcohol in them. And it makes it so it uh, erases the Sharpie marker. It's a little tip for you. If you ever draw on a marker board in, with Sharpie marker and you don't have any dry erase board marker, the Expo marker stuff or the alcohol based cleaning board stuff like this Beep. product placement no i'm kidding i'm not getting any sponsorship from them that'd be cool call me expo in any event um if you just go back over the top of it again with a dry erase marker and then you wipe it it erases it anyhow wow cool so you learn more than just physics in these lessons all right a displacement time graph uh this time i'm going to go ahead and make a curve so we can see how that translates into the other two graphs and so I'm going to show a curve. I'm going to try to curve it all the way out to this dash line here. And we'll see if I can make that long of a curve. And not too bad. Hey, that was pretty good. Sweet. You would think I practiced this ahead of time, and I did not. Okay, so now here we go. We've got a displacement time graph. We've got a nice looking curve. No longer is it constant velocity. Let's get rid of that. Because remember, the slope of a displacement time graph is indeed acceler or acceleration is indeed velocity. So the slope is constantly changing which means the velocity is changing, which means the velocity uh, is, well, I'll say is increasing in this case because we're getting further away from the zero position, which means A uh, is present. It's positive in this example. And I'm going to tell you it is indeed constant. Uh, you can tell it's constant because it's a nice smooth curve. It's not going up and down in all sorts of um, directions. So how would we graph the velocity time graph for that? Because Think about it, the velocity is increased. We're starting off with a shallow slope and then a higher and higher and higher and higher and higher slope, right? Which means I need to have a velocity that starts low, in fact, zero, and finishes high. But it needs to have a constant acceleration. So if I'm looking at my velocity time graph, and that's driving me nuts, although this isn't helping, <laughs> sorry. Uh, by looking at my velocity time graph, something with constant acceleration means I need to have a constant slope. Because remember, the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. So I need to draw a line of constant slope that begins at zero. Zero, the tangent here is zero, it's horizontal, and begins at a pretty high value. It's a pretty moderately high value. So, ready? It's going to be amazing. I am going to draw a straight line. That's not horizontal. Bam! There it is. How about that? And if I were to have isolated this, I can see from here I have constant acceleration because I have constant slope and it's positive. So I have positive A of constant value. And look at that, I'm blending my colors, making all new colors. Cool. Well, lastly, let's do my acceleration time graph. And again, I have constant acceleration, it's positive. So all I need to do down here is have a horizontal line because it's constant. That's positive. So I'm going to toss that sucker right like this. And I'm going to do something like this. Bam. Non-numerically, of course. If I had numbers in here, I'd be able to place it more appropriately. But I think this is pretty appropriate. Okay. I think that's going to wrap up everything for motion graphs. I'm going to go through a series of examples with a little bit more quantity to them in the next video. I hope this helped. I'm going to wrap this up now. Thank you.